Hello and welcome to Darius Comic School and today this will be a pretty interesting um, video. It will be about my uh, Operation Übermensch or Commando Werewolf. I would call it a story developing class. Um, I will show you what I got on this paper and how my story um, is kind of coming to a conclusion and how I do my research and what happened and maybe you can take things from um, how I work and kind of create my comic stories and you can use it for your own stuff. So a couple of things. Um, we got here John Truby, Robert McKee. Um, script writing books um, this will be um, your tools when we come to the theme of the story and how to cook the story but we won't start here we will stop very simple and um, operation ubermensch or commander Wilwolf. Um, let's give me the short pitch it is the second world war and um, yeah, let me let me pick this tank. So it's the Second World War. It's maybe at a point where um, German soldiers um, are on Operation Barbarossa invading the Soviet Union. And I would say it's mostly about oil and Lebensraum and all of that stuff. But um, one soldier... Um, I don't know if he is indoctrinated, if he's an evil guy or not. Um, he falls in a battle and um, he gets picked up and he gets transformed into something uh, like a Weapon X project. Um, or maybe if you've seen the movie with uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme, a Universal Soldier. And he will not be a werewolf, but he will be turned into something strange. So the Germans are experimenting with stuff and um, yeah, it will be something like body horror, something like Weapon X from Barry Windsor Smith. And yeah, check out here my previous videos. This is um, on the story so far. So this is a pretty messy paper and I will guide you through what I have here and um, how it all came to be. Before we start, if you want a commission from me, if you would like, uh, I don't know, whatever it is, Ninja Turtles, Werewolves, um, some Baby Yodas or Mandalorians, hit me up. I do commissions digitally or um, I wouldn't just say spiritually, no, traditionally. And yeah, just hit me up. So um, the Mandalorian is already sold, but yeah. So... I got a few books here, as you can see, Stephen Pressfield, The Gates of Fire, Fight Club. We got Hellboy here and we got a bunch of miniatures here. And this will all make sense uh, in a bit. So, um, yeah, this is not yet finished. Um, some of the bricks need to get sprinkled. So, this is a messy piece of paper. So. Um, the past few days I'm coming back and I wish you a, free, uh, a, a good new year. So um, And I came up with ideas, so what it really takes to do a manga. Because I was reviewing yesterday the Cowboy Bebop manga and how great it is, what I learned from it. And I think when people watch it, they just see the superficial part, so I want to break down what, you really, what it really takes to do a manga, what you really need to know it really takes to do a comic and then um, I want to do also one Don, uh, Don Simpson Jerry Bruckheimer a high concept formula um, like Days of Thunder and um, yeah pretty much a bunch of 80s movies up until the 90s and I was always thinking how can I apply this to my story I mean my story was kind of boiling um, in my subconscious and it was growing and growing and I wasn't thinking actively sometimes actively but the more I let it just cook the more it came and as you can see here 
Commander Werewolf, and then something hits me, like inspiration hits me. Um, and I have to say, um, while I was painting up um, the soldiers for a miniatures game called Bold Action, um, I'm a guy who loves to research. I, I, I wanted to know how do I paint this. Uh, this is a Stuck 3, a Sturmgeschütz. It's not a tank. It's a tank and it has um, the Pack 40 built in. It was pretty simple to produce. It was cheap or cheaper than a tank. And somehow, or what, what I mean, somehow it was, they say, more effective than a tank because this was a bit uh, lower than a tank. Tanks were kind of bigger, so you had more space to fight a, a tank and this could just hide and snipe and something like that. And so... I'm very interested in story and history and um, I was getting like YouTube uh, recommended to me uh, check out uh, Erv Ervin Rommel, the Desert Fox and I was um, watching some of the stuff he did and um, he fought for Germany and I'm an Italian who was born and uh, here in Germany and I live here. Uh, for 38 years, so um, um, Erwin Rommel fought for Nazi Germany, but then, let's say in the end, he tried uh, to kill or assassinate Hitler, but it fails, and then they confront him. Uh, you can either uh, face a tribunal, or you can take the poison pill, and um, we will tell everybody uh, the Americans got you there or there. And so... He killed himself, kind of. And um, then I watched another video. I, I watched a lot of research about World War II. And this is a key point. But I enjoyed it. I soaked it up. I loved the content. It wasn't, it wasn't work. It was interest. Pure interest in um, what weapons do they field. Like, I didn't know uh, what they were fielding. But um, to paint these, um, I needed to know that this is somehow... Uh, the Mauser Carabiner, um, what is it, a, uh, 93K or something like this, and this is a Russian um, machine gun, PP, PP, PH, PH88 or something like this. Well, uh, most thing I know, and then what uniforms they wear and what color everything is. And so I was kind of doing the research, and I... I'm kind of able to draw these things. I know now, should I should I draw um, a setting? I know that uh, the Sturmgewehr 44 is kind of late war weapon, what the officers wore and um, how things changed, what colors the things had and um, how the political situation was. So through play and through love, I kind of soaked in all the things I needed to know um, so that I could put my story in that scenery, which is World War II somewhere in the Ostfront. And Hitler had a hideout that, what, that was called Werewolf somewhere in the Ukra Ukraine. And um, then yesterday, I was I don't know what I was watching, but something... Um, remembered me to Danny Elfman's soundtrack to Batman Returns and it's a great movie and it's the movie with Batman and Penguin and um, Christopher Walken and, and it's a great strange movie and I was always thinking uh, where does Operation Ubermensch take place where where do they create um, these abominations and I was thinking okay maybe maybe they have a secret base somewhere in a zoo somewhere in a, um, in a big city and the, Je the Germans occupied all the cities, maybe maybe somewhere in the Ukraine, maybe somewhere in Poland and they have a secret zoo and um, it's not just like the Germans are evil but the Russians are doing those experiments too and um, maybe it's like an arms race in, in, in something... Um, kind of evil and inhuman and then I was remembered okay Tim Burton and Danny Elfman that is that is my core that is my essence this is um, if you if you define me as an artist I, I would say 
I love um, I love Mignola. I love um, movies from the 90s. I love Tim Burton and all of that stuff. So you're going to the juice of your life. I like also pop punk, pop punk and high school movies, but we're now in a World War II setting. And um, I was thinking about Tim Burton and Danny Elfman, and I was thinking about Batman Returns and the Penguin. And the Penguin in uh, Tim Burton's movie is at a zoo, and that's his secret hideout. And I was thinking, what is what if my evil, um, let's say, S SS officer um, is someone who fell on the front or someone who was disfigured, maybe in World War I, and then he tried to experiment, like a, a bit like Kurt Connors with animals and stuff to regenerate limbs and all of that, and that develops then into their... Um, I don't know how they call it, but like in their Weapon X project and maybe the Russians have also one going on. And then I was thinking about Universal Soldier and um, on Amazon I peeked into Universal Soldier and it's the Vietnam War and there's Dolph Lundgren and there's Jean-Claude Van Damme. Let's, let's make it like this. And Dolph Lundgren is the leader of um, the platoon and Jean-Claude is just like... I don't know, uh, a soldier, and um, they get they get sold out or backstabbed by the, uh, a Vietnamese village, and people die in their platoon, and so Dolph Lundgren turns evil and starts to massacre the people because his his soldiers died, and Jean Claude Van Damme is like um, it's tragic that our people died, but I don't know, maybe these people are innocent. We don't know that they read it out, uh, us out and it's not right to execute them or to massacre them and so they start to fight and um, it is an unhuman situation or system in which both are caught and Dolph Lundgren kind of loses it and acts according to the chaotic he becomes chaos himself but Jean-Claude Van Damme keeps a good heart keeps his moral even in, in the face, face of fear, and that's our theme here. And both fight, both um, get injured and die, uh, and somebody from the Pentagon packs them up, and they get somehow recycled, and they reawaken then somewhere in the 90s, and are used as soldiers like, um, let's say, Wolverine in Weapon X. And so you can see like a lot of things coming together, stealing from different sources, but it's not like really stealing. It's not like I'm stealing Batman Returns or Universal Soldier, but it's definitely being inspired and knowing, okay, how should I, how, how will this story that I want to draw um, or tell, how will it unfold? And now I have like ingredients like butter, sugar, um, cacao, and now I can bake my cake and from here from Universal Soldiers I go to the movie Stalingrad and it's a German movie from the 1990s and at the beginning of the movie it's about um, German soldiers and I think they're kind of the elite and they go to Stalingrad and they're the best of the best they travel via train into the Soviet Union and at the beginning of the movie they are pretty cocky they're confident they look down um, to to the people and um, they they haven't taste uh, like all they did they tasted only victory and then they go to Stalingrad and Stalingrad is a whole different beast and then at a certain point they start to doubt the war effort and why they are there and at a certain point they, um, they find a Russian boy and um, they take him under their wing and at a certain point they have to execute them and some very tragic stuff then there's the final battle and I think I don't know um, if everybody returns but everybody's changed at the end of the movie so at the beginning of the movie there are die-hard um, Nazi veterans and at the end of the movie there are disillusioned men doubting, doubting the system. And 
So um, that's also a very good source of what could happen, what will happen in the story. So I got an Universal Soldier, then I got the DNA with the human animals. Uh, this is a movie which is seen as a failure. It stars Val Kilmer and Marlon Brando, but I like the animals. It's like um, the island of Dr. Moreau. And I have to see what the theme of my movie is, because it's like somehow a body horror, somehow you are a human and then you get turned into something inhuman and then it's war and war wants to see you do unhuman things and it's like this double monster beat and we'll see what i do with it and then there's the generation next from chris buckalo this is a comic go watch comics bazaar and um, it's great because it's a it's a team it's a young team of uh, mutants um, going into a rescue mission and it's um, it's similar to where eagles dare to fly where eagles dare to fly or even something like um, let me see what's the name like the rock where you have to infiltrate something or like Metal Gear 1. You have to go in and you have to go out and something has to happen. So I would like um, the team to have a mission to go somewhere in and then be betrayed or die or see what's really going on. Infiltration as you can see here. And yeah, a lot of stuff. And then... I was thinking, okay, let's come up here. I was thinking about Evan Rommel, so maybe there's a good soldier, who was, maybe he stands out. And then here we have themes of the story. McKee, Truby, I will check out these books, because this will point me into the right direction, because like, there has to be um, a point made like uh, at the beginning of the story or the comic or the movie like you have a, a theme like life is like this and your pro protagonist believes in this but your protagonist is probably flawed and then he learns something at, a, at the end he knows something for good or for ill and he changes like he he's kind of the avatar or lens into that world and I was thinking about how to keep your hum humanity in an inhuman system and fighting tyranny, monsters, crime, war, humanity, sanity versus inhumanity, inhum cruelty, lies, believing in propaganda, living in lies, and that's hell. And that's maybe the situation where we're in, like where uh, maybe the Germans were or even the Russians or like... Um, but we're not talking collectively. We're talking here an individual who maybe believes in something and maybe that's wrong or maybe he tries to be his best and then he understands that the cause he's fighting is not just and maybe he's a just person. Or I don't know, maybe maybe it's also an anti-hero. Maybe he's very arrogant and then at the end of it he sees um, where things got wrong. But... In my eyes, this hero, um, he's somebody um, who fights definitely on the Oz front, but is definitely one who tried to uphold uh, law and order. And there were soldiers like that. There were officers who um, had to do stuff which they didn't want to do. There were also psychopaths that th thrived in, 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 in those systems. But there were definitely also decent human beings and um, I know of also of German soldiers that got um, captured or wounded and one German soldier, he was pretty young um, and a Polish family adopted him and when, he first, when they first found him he, he thought they would kill him but they didn't. They adopted him, they protected him um, he said like a son and he didn't know why but maybe they lost their son um, and they tried to replace him with the soldier who reminded them of them and and so in the cruelties of war there were always also uh, moments of valor and humanity left and I think that's where the story will go and also in 
you, you, you need to know what kind of writer you are, what you really are. And as you can see, I love World War II, I love werewolves, um, I love stories, um, dark versus um, the good. Um, you can see like the classic stories, the, the, the Lord of the Rings, um, the Fight Club, where there's always a question, what's real, what's not real, what's masculinity, and then there's um, 300 or Gates of Fire. And I found out that three, Stephen Pressfield, and that's where it all comes um, back for full circle, um, Stephen Pressfield, I hope there is uh, a list of books he did, well, maybe not in this book, um, In the War of Art, but he did a book that's called Killing Rommel, and um, Gates of Fire. So he wrote a lot about um, wars and warriors. And um, yeah, and I think I go in a similar direction or I'm attracted by similar stuff. Um, it is also, it is fighting. It is um, being a warrior for the good and for the light. And a lot of... Um, stuff also in the supernatural and in the pulp and castles so i reunite reunite on that with uh, mike mignola and also with um tim burton and all of that stuff and you know like the story that you've heard right now if you've seen the whole thing like it is all of my interests all of my love it is like That's why I call it the juice of life. And I have also the juice of life where it's the high school movie and the rock and the Jack Black and the school of rock. But this time it's time for, let's say, a war comic. And here in red, I was uh, thinking it's about um, war, masculinity, the real stuff, the experience, truth, humility, knowing self-government, right judgment versus lies, grandiose fantasies, stupid, brutal, scam, lies, um, only icing, no cake. And I think in World War II um, there was this definitely a bunch of propaganda, a bunch of uh, tyrants in power and um, you're kind of a pawn in their bloody hands and how to act in the face of a totalitarian system and what you can do. And I don't know if I have all the right answers, but we, I, I, I want to say I and we will explore that with our hero turned monster and then we'll see what will happen. So um, I hope this was a good or helpful video. Um, you can see it's a pretty pretty messy sometimes a birth process as you can see here is the painting um, I was using this for the Mandalorian to cover up or to as you can see the brush brush strokes match but yeah we'll see us in the next video and I hope you had some fun see ya